recording has been started. So, last we left off, you all were at Tsubasa and his sister's party. Specifically their birthday party that is a little bit disjointed from when it's supposed to be happening. At least for most people in a birthday party setting. And last we left off, you were meeting Akira, Tsubasa's father who is disheveled and looks like he just woke up and, honest to god, looks like he might fall back asleep before the night's over. (laughs) Like, full send, you would see this man passed out in a bustling party. Not drunk, just straight up tired. He does a lot of work. Let him be. (laughs) Yeah. So, Tsubasa, you were picked up in a twirl of a hug. Though not as dramatic as your French side of the family, per se. And you were then set down and your hair ruffled, as it always is. And you get a soft smile. And... Are you enjoying your party? Mm-hmm. It's... It's been nice seeing everyone again. And, um... He does take a small step to the side to gesture to the two friends that remain. <laughs> it's just like, and these are a couple of my friends, too, from school. So I've heard. And it's at that point you realize, or at least remember who set up all of the wards around the estate. Just like, oh, so, right. <laughs> So basically, for context, basically he set up wards that allows him to, at will, tune into different discussions, which is why a lot of people, when they go to any event here, either get startled by him suddenly knowing something he wasn't there for, or going, you bitch, that was a private conversation. Either way, he knows things he shouldn't. Tsubasa still leans against his dad, just like, okay, good. Do I, do, I, do I need to introduce them to you two? No, and I already... I already know both of them. From different avenues of life, I suppose. And there's he like a... woo-woo face from Helia, like... Big ol' eyes, like, what? I... I know your auntie. We used to travel together. In my youth. You guys did? Yes. A bit of a wild one they are. I had to pull them out of the frying pan, so to speak. But they jumped right back into the fire. That's where they live. (laughs) Truly. (laughs) But I know your other friend from... Political meetings, so to speak. Yeah, no, that's not surprising. Um, But, yeah, guys, this is my dad. Papa. Uh, you never out of character, you never told me what title he would introduce his dad with. I'm not going to. You have fun with that. You bitch! (laughs) That's just the dad, TM. Yeah. (laughs) He's just like, um, you can call him Hidaka's son? Too? There's just a chuckle of they don't need to use a title with me if that's what you're looking for. Any friend of the family is a friend of mine. Yeah. Papa's... Fr- honestly, really, fr- just as friendly as everyone else. Just... Um... And he does glance towards the room where he had heard Granddad's voice and is just like, Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a different brand of friendly. <laughs> Are you okay, Papa? You looked like you fell asleep. Yes, I am alright, just catching up on a few moments of rest before we get to the celebration proper. Do your friends have any questions? They seem out of place. Um... Not me? No, I'm just hanging. 
I see. Arthur lives in a perpetual state of I'm just vibing. Which is an odd state to be considering his political prowess, but that's between him and God, quite literally. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> or there's this, this short chuckle of. <laughs> yeah. I expected that much. You truly are your father's son. The truth it doesn't make much sense to you because your father's a very rigid kind of man. Arthur's just like, I'm sorry, what? That's up to Arthur, but... <laughs> what were words Regard you said? Hmm? What were words you said? It sure were. Yeah. Do you want to get some mm. more sleep before the celebration, Papa? I think that would be best. I wouldn't want to fall asleep during another birthday celebration. <laughs> Yeah, I I just wanted to say hi and see you real quick. Understandable. I, you have met your friends here, right? Well, I found Jonah. I know Harley's here, but um, I didn't think Vince was going to be coming. Yeah, it is a bit odd he show up at this hour. As far as he told me, he had a job at this scheduling time conflict, so to speak. That's what he told me, too. Well, you're free to talk to him about that. I don't pry into an adult's personal career unless they tell me. Yeah, I was actually planning to see what was going on, because Grand Granddad was laughing. So, yeah. Go and speak with your friend. I'll. I should be only down for another hour. And uh, steps away from you. Subasa does step out of the doorway and lets it close. Before, it's just like, um, is there anything you guys want to do or? Totally not I don't to think move. so. This is like the biggest party I think I've ever been at, and it's a lot of people. Fair. That's honestly really fair. Um, in which case, it, he just sort of steps up to the door, visibly hesitates because he's not sure if this is actually a good idea before he goes and knocks on the door. Just like, Granddad, are you in there? That's over got to someone else. You bitch! Fuck you. Fuck you! So, between Aster and Raz, who wants to go next? You got the thing planned, Raz. Unless you need more time. Uh, do, do you feel like going first, Curry? <laughs> Perhaps? No. Okay. All you, bud. Okay. I think Zahn's going to fucking perish is what's going to happen here. But regardless, Raz. Technically Raz and Lance. Mm -hmm. You both... Both... Mm -hmm. Sure. I don't need to try. But okay. Um... Raz and Lance, more specifically Raz, you're holding one hell of a stare down with Jonah, who looks nonplussed, if a bit amused to a degree. Like, it's you're holding one of those stares with ferocity. Like, you're straight up like, look me dead in my soul and you'll find nothing there kind of look. Meanwhile, Jonah has the, like, lazy stare of, I can hold this for the next eternity kind of look. Like, not even an an antagonizing or aggressive, just this is fucking hilarious to him. 
that that definitely pisses Raz off even more. <laughs> yeah. I think that Lance in this situation actually has either a stopwatch or the stopwatch on the gummy phone going. Yeah. Just to see how long it takes for one of them to blink. And just 200 money on whoever can last the longest. <laughs> and Raz, because you're trying not to think about, you know, not blinking, your mind turns to different topics. At first, it's, why didn't Marilyn tell you about having a boyfriend? You're her closest friend. Then it's to, it's the ADHD jump from, that's your first thought, followed by thinking about how best friends operate, and then thinking about trust, followed by recognizing the spell you used last night when everything was kind of going sideways with Lex. And you were told some time ago when you first used that spell and it failed that that spell requires, to the extent that you used it, an inordinate amount of trust. It requires someone to know you mean no harm and to not grow hostile in response. As you had tried it on your own teacher, she had just laughed and said, you're going to have to try a little harder than that. But you tried it on Lex, and there was no resistance. There was no hesitation. Sure, there was what you can recall as question, but there wasn't hesitation or resistance. And... Lance, mm -hmm. as this thought passes Raz's like mental forefront, so to speak, you start to see tears well up in her eyes. And Jonah just goes, uh, does this normally happen with her? Without blinking. Not normally, no. Uh, hey, you alright? With, like, the hesitation of, I know I don't have the right to ask this, after all, you're trying to mentally destroy me with your mind but also you good kind of reaction from the new boyfriend you see I do think that if anything were to cause her to blink it would be that the tear like just the, the, the coming back out of like you know whatever you are consumed by a thought and then you're like wait a second I'm real <laughs> yeah you know what I mean yeah. Uh, so do just... you blink? Yes. Blinks the tears away. Like, what? <laughs> well, uh, what? Lance, you instantly, as soon as the blink, first blink happens, just click. And just, whatever time you deem fit, whether it's funny or exaggerated, you're free to say. Four minutes, 20 seconds. I fucking got you! <laughs> I think Raz would count that as a win in her book. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then, with a kind of, like, prolonged blink of, oh, wow, I forgot how not blinking affects everything when you suddenly do blink, from Jonah, of just, oh, Jesus. Okay. And then opens his eyes again. Are you alright? You kind of uh, started crying. <laughs> like, while she's actively, like, trying to wipe the, the tear from her eyes, she's like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, um. At this point, definitely on the drunker side of Tipsy, because she's been trying to keep up with him and just kind of, like, 
stumbles out of her chair. <laughs> it's kind of clumsy. Uh, just I, I'm great. I, I win. Um, I, 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 I gotta go. <laughs> All right. Don't get lost or throw up in a bush. It's not your estate. And kind of half cocked, worried almost grin. That. Just, like, a, a moment of squinting. Like, if she throws up, she's going to throw up in a bush now. Uh, just, just a shrug. Take care of yourself. Drink some water. No. no. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> it, she almost, like... I, I feel like her tail kind of catches the the uh, the stool on the way out, and it doesn't fall over, but it's still like a, a you know, just a clumsy like a donk. <laughs> yeah. Lance, do you do anything? Lance is gonna like try to keep Raz steady and not. Because I mean, I feel like Lance has had experience with being drunk before mm -hmm. like extremely drunk and does not and just wants to make sure that Raz like handles everything okay yeah Raz doesn't throw up somewhere <laughs> embarrassing <laughs> or at least not in her hair yeah at least not like anywhere with a lot of foot traffic yeah So where do you head, Raz? Just, uh... She is gonna look for Lex after that realization, but she's also going to lean very heavily on Lance. And I'm sorry, I know I've asked this before, but how tall is Lance? You probably have asked this before, and that's alright, because I've forgotten. <laughs> um... Wasn't it like 5'8"? I think it was like 5'8 or 5'7, five, 5'8. Five, He's just a bit taller than Helio. Actually, hold on. I think it's in... Oh yeah, no, you're right. It was like 5'4 or something. Because we keep uh, making jokes about how Lex... It was 5'11. He... Was it? Yeah. Perfect. That, that sounds means... fake, but okay. I, I feel like that's not too much of a struggle then, because Raz is Raz is six feet. I was just saying, I was thinking, because if he's like a little guy, it would be kind of a funny visual. <laughs> Still, I I feel like that's also helpful though. Just like the definitely like leads her head on his shoulder. Like, thank you for not letting me hit the floor. <laughs> I was thinking about it. If you do make it funny. <laughs> so where do you head? She is going to look for Lex after the realization of the level of trust. Which I think while walking around and looking, she's also going to be like, I also got into your head that one time, but I was different. <laughs> It was a little different because it was somebody else that let me in. <laughs> just, you know, just the drunk rambling of, like, I guess the thoughts that passed through her head. Letting, so, letting Lance know what's going on. <laughs> so, I need either one of you to roll just a dead roll of history or intelligence disadvantage. Because both of you are fucking tipsy. Both are also at disadvantage? You- no. You can either roll history with a dead roll, or intelligence with disadvantage. Like, that's- the history is if you both work together. What's your history modifier? Not good. <laughs> Four. <laughs> 
I've got a six. That I feel like that ought to be on you. <laughs> Don't place this curse on me. First. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. Because every time I say it, something bad happens. Mm-hmm. Heart of the car. <laughs> Sixteen. So, it takes you a moment as you're walking down through small groups of people and just apologizing at first and listening to Raz talk her way through what she realized. And then it, you remember as she's talking that Lex said earlier that he was feeling a little unsettled, a little overwhelmed, and he was going to step outside for a breather, and that's been about two hours now. Lance is just going to kind of like slowly direct Raz towards the, I guess, the front entrance. Just still, like, keeping one hand, like, either around her shoulder or just on one arm, just to make sure that she does not end up flat on the floor. Mm Mm-hmm. So go ahead and move your tokens. way to the front entrance. Sorry. (laughs) And as you move through crowds of people, both entering and exiting at intervals that only a big gala could afford, you see Lex turn to face you with a briefly exhausted look on his face, and then the immediate flash of worry as you're stumbling, Raz, and Lance, to him, you look no better. And he immediately, even with him being shorter, he moves much faster. And he goes, are are you alright? Please tell me you haven't been drinking. (laughs) Okay, we won't. Mm. I feel like the tears come the tears definitely come back whenever she like looks at Lex and it hits her again. And uh if he if he will let her, he, she will detach herself from Lance for a moment and just scoop Lex into a hug. Does Lance let her go? Yes. At first, Raz, there is not hesitation, but concern across his face as you move quicker than probably you should be able to when you're drunk. And he relents, though you can still tense, like feel the tension in his shoulders, even as he returns the hug. He goes, okay, okay. All right, I get it. You're, you, I know you have drank more than Lance. I can tell that much. Uh, uh, you, do you want me to cure that? I can. <laughs> oh, whoa, no, no, thank you. Not, not until it feels bad. <laughs> she like leases him. She went at the tension and just, I'm sorry. I. I just got uh... Dude. <laughs> he does not let go of your hands, Raz, in that sense of a good friend kind of making sure you both don't fall over 
and get the words you need to find out of your head. And he's just watching. Smiling still, but watching. Yeah? What's up? Okay, Lex, I... I was just thinking about last night. And... Yeah? About how you let me in your head. I, I mean... I did. I used a spell that if you if you didn't trust, y- yes, yes. I, know. I was thinking about it, and I, you mean a lot to me. You were a really good friend, and she she wants to hug him again, but like hesitates because that tension before, but she grips hands. I know you were in my head. Are you okay? That's not exactly for everyone. It's- I saw some stuff, <sighs> but I can figure. I'm, I'm, it doesn't make me want to go away. <laughs> Just means you let me see it. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit loud last night. Very loud, and are you okay? Really though, I'm used to it. You having to suddenly deal with it because of a spell. I can't imagine it was very kind to you. I can't, I can't imagine it's very kind to me. You live with that. <laughs> you, you live like that. That's, it was. Yeah, I do. You should it makes my job to. easier. Oh. Because that way no one can catch me off guard. Because everybody's loud. And sounds loud differently. Except for Arthur, I don't know why he's quiet. I couldn't tell you. I'm glad he is, though. He defies it. (laughs) He has a certain energy, and I know that for certain. But it's a little weird that he's quiet. I'm starting to think that I don't exactly hear what normal people hear. And he kind of gives a half-cocked grin that is a little more normal than what he usually gives. But it's crooked and wrong. Like he doesn't know how to smile. (laughs) Oh, I think I just got Zahn with that one. (laughs) Stop making Lex so relatable. Oh, die. What do you want me to do? I've been forbidden from dying. Well, yeah. So, die another way. You know, with feelings. Anyway. Well, we're here to listen to the loudness of the people we care about, and we can take it we want to take it (laughs) and he moves one hand from clutching both of yours to just holding one of yours and that like very gentle but firm grip of someone who's prepared to give the worst news all the time and just says you don't need to handle anything for me I'm I'm a big boy I can handle my own battles. Now, go rest, or I actively will cast Restoration on you, and you won't like it. Please go rest. I will say, whenever he says he can fight his own battles, her face, like, I feel like it hardens a little bit, like, I know something. (laughs) She was trying to hold on to, but that kind of, I don't know, it hit different for her. Just Is something wrong? With like the questioning tone of someone who definitely saw the minuscule reaction that you were trying to hide. It It could be. I uh 
she looks from Lance to Lex to Lance to Lex and just I might after the after drinking I need to I need to talk to you and Arthur about something oh. ominous battle but all right. I can't fight that you will have to fight I got uh, she starts crying again <laughs> oh no just to like <laughs> just the uh knowing when an emotional drunk is right there and just oh no from Lex and then just okay okay how about I carry you to somewhere you can rest okay <laughs> okay and with no fucking issue whatsoever that Lance might have been having before, this five foot three bodyguard straight up no diff picks you up. Your ass. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and just walks you over to one of the couches. And then, like, basically tells Lance to follow. And then just sets you on the couch. And then just has the reaction of, okay, I'm going to continue stepping away for a bit. Can you handle yourself, Raz? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm holding you to that. Yeah. So your word right now is not exactly safe and sound. Great. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Lance, keep an eye on her. Just like the half-hearted two-finger salute. I will do my best. You ever see someone deflate in their entirety from being entirely on guard to just surrounded by morons instantly. <laughs> it's the first time this happy-go-lucky, always faithful, always trusting quote-unquote individual just has the look of I'm surrounded by morons. Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Lance? Yeah. Sorry about this, bud. And uh, you feel quite possibly the both warmest sensation and also almost like a hug. As you are no longer considered drunk as Lex walks away, patting you on the arm. Wait, no, hold on. Wait. wait. The door shuts behind him. <laughs> After the door shuts, Raz, like, pulls herself over the back of that couch and just looks over it and, like, Lance, go re-drunk yourself! <laughs> I would, but I don't know if the alcohol is still in my system. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Fun fact about lesser restoration, you guys. Alcohol is considered a toxin. Well, naturally. Uh-huh. And lesser restoration cures all poisons and diseases. So redrug yourself, Lance! <laughs> <laughs> One of us needs to be responsible. It might as well be me. I am For now. <laughs> and that's where we'll move on to the next scene. Aster. Hi. What are you doing currently? Staring into the water. Kind of talking to himself. Didn't know you had a name. Good to know that you have one. Good of you not to share it. Hmm. 
you hear from across the way the sound of the door leading out to this open area open and you kind of see very hesitantly the eldest of the children step out and give you a sheepish look of sorry am I interrupting something no in the most literal fashion I'm talking to myself What can I do you for? I honestly am just worried about your little troop, if that makes sense. Eh, you shouldn't. I think I should, because and she steps forward a little bit. Not getting in your personal bubble, but more stepping away where the door wouldn't immediately translate her words and just because as far as I'm concerned you guys walk a dangerous path you show me a path that doesn't have any dangers on it and I'll show you one that's protected by nothing but wise words for someone who is barely on their first chapter Yeah, I had a rough chapter. Yours hasn't even concluded. This is still the introduction. But enough exactly. of the wordplay. What's actually bothering you? If I tell you, you'll call me crazy. Try me. I stuck my hand in my own shadow and grabbed my heartless to ask it questions. It gave me the answers. I don't know what to do with them. So your typical day as a warlock? How's that going for you? Not good. Because now he's gone clammy. Yeah. I have something similar of my own. Everyone thinks that I'm some great sorcerer. Truth be told, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. He looks at her and changes his face to what he assumes would be prime Caesar Harold. You don't gotta talk to me about expectation before changing back. I wasn't talking about expectation. I was talking about exploration, so to speak. I'm... Oh. I'm the daughter of a great queen. For lack of a better term, I am expected to be everything that I'm not. So, I ran. And I haven't looked back. I visit on occasion to let them know that I'm not dead. But I haven't looked back. Because that was the choice that I made. In the smuggest tone, Aster can manage. He goes, I thought this wasn't about expectations. <laughs> and she rolls her eyes well you try and guess what classes I am just from looking at me don't need to no I don't care <laughs> they're your classes why would they be important to me you're an odd child I'm traumatized at least you can admit it not very many people can hard not to so what's this deal about your shadow he's maybe I can help grumpy. he's just being grumpy he had a name never told it to me and now he's going quiet did something happen? I was mean to him. Rude. I regret it. So what are you going to do about it? Wait until he stops pitching a fit and see if he wants to talk. It's not what I am. Oh. 
What are you going to do about it? Puts a hand over his heart. Keep an eye out. That's better. <laughs> hey, DM. Yep. Disaster feel anything? A hesitation not your own. He's gonna take a moment, kind of pop his neck. I'm gonna go for a walk. I like walks nowadays, they seem to help a lot. Getting a little yeah. late. Hmm. You should know, shadows are our allies. I'm going to go ahead and just take a walk. You're free to join me if you want. I'll be back shortly. Just. I think you can handle yourself. After all, I have to take care of my little sister. You mean the one who's probably out here right now? No. She's not. He doesn't believe her. <laughs> and she turns yeah. and heads back inside. Where do you go, Aster? To the side of the house. Taking his time. He's just gonna go over here for a bit. Maybe make his way a bit farther down to the this one seemingly gated place. <laughs> And do his best to hop the gate. <laughs> Make a perception check as you walk. Passive 20 doesn't do it? No. About 24. <laughs> Barely. We love to hear it. As you're walking, not really paying attention or thinking about paying attention, in a field of people that are remarkably different from one another, for some reason your eyes both catch and don't catch onto a person in the distance kind of far down the original path you walked down, you can barely make out a dress. Feather shawl. Mostly blacks and browns. And it's hard to keep your mind on focus because this person is unremarkable. They are forgettable. In a sea of too much information, they are average. The type of person that even dressed up would blend into a crowd. And for a second, they almost did. And you realize this is a woman and she's laughing and even the look of her laugh sounds normal. And you see white hair that ends in black. You think it might be black or brown eyes. And then you shake your head and it's, why are you even focusing on this person? They're average. They're probably just another visitor that's being trapped at the gates.
So this was where again? Off towards the original area, kind of in this area, like towards that direction. He's going to hop back over the gate and follow. Just kind of walk over, make sure everything's okay, you know? That's the worst that could happen. Again, I'm not changing the map from daytime because it's too much of a hassle right now. That's but... valid. But you walk for a little while. It's still hard to make out any real detail. Any real understanding of why such an average looking person normal forgettable is at a place so magnificent and you get closer and closer and you realize that in your talking with 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 the others with Tsukiyomi and with With generally the rest of the clientele, you've managed to stumble upon what looks like old friends meeting up, or at least something akin to it. So I'm going to place you on the map because it is near the entrance. Ugh. Where is your token? Here we go. You approach from around the bend, and it is almost empty in this front, in, in the front of this estate. Also Echo. Handling it. So you round the front, or rather the side of one of the main entrance ways. And in the distance, you can see this woman, white to black hair that reaches her waist, slightly curly, but not definingly so. More of a wave than a curl, but you can see the curls at the end. And you got closer, and indeed she has not pitch black eyes, but the kind of black eyes of onyxes, the kind you'd find at any local jewelry store. And she has a patient smile, and she seems to be happily talking to Takeru, uh, Tsubasa's uncle. And they seem to be getting along rather well, the same way that an old friend of the family would show up after years. Are you trying to listen in, or are you just watching? He'll watch for a bit for he'll step closer to listen in. Probably underneath this uh All right. right here. Because I do see that there is a on this angle there is some place to hide technically in here. Mm-hmm. He'll kind of make his way over there and listen in as best he can hiding. Make a perception check. Okay. 29. What are my Good roll. You overhear the woman speaking. 
And it's hard to keep focus because her voice is droning. The sort of lulling normalcy that you'd hear from a business office. It is regal only in the sense that she's queen of her own domain and everywhere else she's she barely exists at all. And she says, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you all throw the best shindigs I've ever heard of. But I really can't stay. I just came to deliver a present for an old friend. After all, me and Red have history, and you know that. And Takeru speaks up. I know. Trust me, I'm well aware he speaks highly of you. Though I can't imagine why, if that's no offense to you. Oh no, it's no offense to me. I much prefer living the life that I have now. I'll leave the danger in... oddities, so to speak, to Red. But as far as I'm here for... Give my condolences to him. I hear he's been having it rough with the anniversary of his wife. I would apologize myself, but I don't want to sour the mood. I really ought to be going. My husband will get quite fraught with peril, so to speak, if I'm not home shortly. And then... Takeru says, of course, of course. Your husband is eccentric, and I don't see how that managed to work out, but if you say it does. I'll see you later, at a more calm time. Right, Lady Taish? Of course. And you don't have to refer to me by my titles. Just Taish is all right. And she does a bit of a curtsy with her, not ballroom gown, but more of a nice blackish brown dress that is has a little bit of poof to it, but not a lot. And it looks like the rest of her, normal. A normal dress for a normal woman. And she starts to walk away. Thank you. I was trying to figure out how to spell that. Mm hmm So what do you do? As yeah, she is walking away. He stands up from his hiding place and leans over the counter. He has a hard expectation that he's been... And one of them knew he was there, and he just waits for it to carry. And kind of staring at him long, like just with the long stare look. And as Lady Taish walks away, Takeru seems to completely bypass you and starts to head back as if he doesn't know you're there. He will step over the area to see if he changes. What do you do? He steps over the little counter to see if it changes. Kind of staring at him to see if he's just rude or if he actually can't see him. There's a moment as he steps past the edge of the first homestead, so to speak. And there's a pause as footsteps halt briefly and then backpedals looking around towards you and then giving you a look of, can I help you? No, I'm sorry. Just wondering. I 
overheard a little bit. Didn't mean to, you know? Not my place, I got lost. I was also, may or may not have been checking for an old man who was in a tree earlier. Does he really not ever wear shoes? He wears shoes. Really? Yes. Do, do you force him to wear them? No. Okay. He is currently talking to one of Subasa's old friends, however. Last I checked on him, at least. Weird for someone to talk to someone else's old friend. Or am I just not used to the dynamic yet? Red talks to everyone. It's how he has so many friends. Fair. Friends are good. Are you sure you're just taking a walk? It is a bit laid out. I'm a warlock, sir. I would like to talk with my shadow sometime. Of course. Don't hold yourself up in the shadows too long. Of course you're not. going to miss the celebration. And then continues oh, to walk. I wouldn't dare. Have a good day. And immediately looks over at Lady Tish if she is still there. She's quite a bit a ways away, having slowed her pace to more of a saunter, but she is still currently walking away. And just like before, you're having trouble keeping your focus on her, as if she's somehow, despite being starkly contrasted, in blacks and browns to the pinks and vibrant greens and the dusk the dusk sky just it's hard to keep focus on her he's going to take a moment and put his hand to his chest to see if he can sense anything around him kind of ask quietly and what I see is what I'm seeing real? You get an affirmative. Not the voice, but the feeling of an affirmative. And he's going to take a step back, keep his hand on his heart this time now because he is, believes he's alone, just going to make sure that fucking psychopath isn't on this planet, is he? <laughs> he's going to try and see if he can ping fucker. You feel nothing. Terrifying. Good. And he's going to make his way back to the party. One last little stop and look around just to make sure. Can I do an investigation check? Or perception? What are you trying to perceive or investigate? If anything looks off with this purple building or the area around it. Make an investigation check. As you look around and do a cursory look at first, then zeroing in on some things that might look odd to you, maybe you were just well hidden? Takes a moment. I'm not that good. I won't press if there is somebody here that helped me, but... I'm not that good at hiding. Two left feet and all. There's something. God, Aster, you're talking to yourself, aren't you? First your shadow, now yourself. Oh. What do you do? 
He does not leave immediately after that little monologue and just keeps sitting for a bit. Going to hold out his hand to see if darkness is summonable. Kind of summon and hold a dark farag. You do. Closes his hand. He summons it. He's going to hop back into the purple building because something is fucking with him. Curiosity and every other untrustworthy man of him. Just the... There's no fucking way. That man is a walking sentinel. There's no way he didn't see me. So what do you do? Uh, let me see. Hold on. I think I'll check my spells real quick. Who lose that, Jerry? I'm I'm not being paranoid, said the <laughs> someone very very much with paranoid. Me too. Get it, son. I admit I have paranoia, motherfucker. Just... Okay, he's gonna take one last look around now that he's actually in the building, see if he missed something, and after that he's probably gonna head back to the party. Do you one actively do anything? He's going to kind of... This is gonna sound weird. Um, he's going to hold out the bare basic of magic that they're taught at the academy in his hand to see if it changes or alters in any way whenever he's checking just around. Just a flicker of light and dark, I guess. Make an arcana check. Oh, that's a plus one. I better have god and anime on my side. They are not. You just barely made it. Oh, fuck me. There they are. Sorry for doubting you. <laughs> as as you hold out the, like, it's not a spell so much as it is the bare basic of what starts any spell. It's like detect magic, but it's not. It's your innate ability to sense certain presences. And as a ranger, that's more honed. So as you hold your hand out and summon just the bare basics of magic into your into your hand, at first there's nothing. Not that there nothing happens, but that it's it catches it for lack of a better term, you don't notice it until after it's already happened. Because for a flicker of a second, you swear the magic that is normally your shade of color, the color that defines your magic, for a flicker of a second, long enough to be seen, but not, but not long enough to be fully registered, it was the default state of magic just average a normal spell and then it's back to yours he'll mumble under his breath there we are okay I know I'm not good at magic, but I'm not a basic bitch to it. I'm sorry if you're the small child, actually, now that that dawns on me. No, no, they don't. They would have said something by now. My magic's purple. Not basic white. 
Well, I guess it's more basic clear, isn't it? Chato, am I alone right now? <laughs> and he's gonna like quickly move a hand to his heart, just like, dude, am I alone or am I freaking the fuck out? Am I thinking too much? You, you get an uncertain response. He just immediately, like, in the most defeated sense, goes, uh, and, like, crouches down. <laughs> like, in the sense of, he's not right, but he's not wrong, and it's gonna mess with him because of the isms he has. I'm gonna go check on them. Gosh. Definitely leave this place. Definitely, definitely leave this place. Remember, you gotta be there for Sue. Oh God, right, the things with Sue, that's another thing you need to think of. Not right now. Okay. In the middle of your droning talks to yourself of trying to psych yourself up or calm yourself down, you just hear the very soft wolf That was a dog. That was a dog. No, wait, hold on. One more time, bud. Woof. He's going It's a very to... familiar wolf. He's just going to think, no. No. One more time, little buddy. And then he's going to cast speak with animals. You're being weird in the same voice you're, you remember of Toro. Toro! What the fuck are you doing here? I've been here. Did, did you cover me? What happened? I walked away with the others to... <sighs> the woman's weird. A weird woman you can, like, focus on? Kind of? Yeah, she was caught my eye to- God, I hope that means I haven't been hanging around Dream Eaters too much. Was there something else in here, or was it just you? I just got here. Oh, goody! There's something in here with us both now. No, no. Go get Sue. Go get- Okay. Okay, Aster. Promise. And kind of smacks his own cheeks. Go get Tsubasa- Go get Helia and maybe Rat. No, not Raz. Maybe Arthur. Wait, you left Lex alone? He told me to stay. Hey, mm. how much does he really know? Who? Lex. You're young, not dumb. He knows a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he knows how to be a kid, though. No, he does not. It's okay. We can teach him, right? Yeah. We're gonna teach him, bud. Okay. The other rattles went ahead. So that's going to be fun. Back to the party or somewhere forward? To the party. Okay. Well, only Raz understands him, so as long as she hasn't been drinking, we'll be good. Yeah. Well, she's been drinking, we can... hasn't she? Maybe. I overheard oh. some of her talking, and it wasn't exactly, um, sane. So. Yeah. Okay. Hey, bud, could you do me a favor real quick? Yeah. Do you sense any dream readers around us right now? The heck do you think I am? Some sort of radar for other dream readers? 
He's going to give him that dumb, founded look of, I grew up around your parents. Don't you dare try me right now. Oh, wait, you don't know that. <laughs> and like, that kind of facial expression dawns on him mid-sentence. Like, oh, right, sorry. Uh, God, how do they stay? They did it. Um, Could you sniff the air for anything that looks or smells like it would be found at Dad's barn? Well, I can't do that because there's a lot of bad smells here. Weird smells. Weird how? So I've just not. You know. Really don't, bud. Uh, and Toro to like pats to the ground a couple of times. Uh, I guess the easiest way to explain it is that there's people are always listening. That kind of magic. You ever seen a part of the movies where, like, the child tells one of the surviving victims that the killer was seen led into the house? Mm-hmm. That kind of face appears on Aster's. Just like, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, let's go, bud. And just picks up Toro. Let's go. <laughs> Back to the party. Yep. Did you guys enjoy that one? Misadventures of Aster and every dream eater that he can find. Real. So. I thought it was Aster and his paralysis demon. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's Aster and his... You're going to look at me and tell me I'm wrong? <laughs> so, who wants to go next? Because I think in like one or two more scenes and we'll do the actual celebration. I mean, I've got no issue going next. Go ahead. Oh. So you knock on the door... And the response you get is a very clear, clear as day, your grandfather going, Who is there? It's me, Granddad Tsubasa. Come in, come in! He does go take a step inside, pauses for a moment, looks back at the others, is just like, Do you guys want to come in, or do you want to vague hand gestures of do you want to come in or stay out here do hey, are you okay if we follow you in there yeah I'm, I'm fine with it uh, you'll get to meet another one of my friends too okie dokie yeah so he goes inside probably be safe. Yep, there they are. <laughs> the first thing you notice, Tsubasa, as you walk around the bend, is the familiar, short, messy, tuft of purplish pink hair. The sort of hair that you'd find on a anime protagonist. Except that kind of got handed off to someone else, didn't it, Tsubasa? <laughs> Listen, Tsubasa got the white hair of the anime protagonist. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, he, the the purple pink hair got superseded by the white an anime boy, white haired <laughs> anime boy. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm out. Goodbye. So Tsubasa, the first thing you see is Vincent's hair. His, his back is to you, and he doesn't seem to be turning, even though he definitely heard your voice. Your grandfather, however, is grinning ear to ear, and seems delighted that you're here. 
Tsubasa does smile at his granddad before looking at Vincent and moving a little bit closer. He's just like, um, hey Vince, I thought you said you couldn't come. He turns a little further away from you and goes, Boss said I had to show up. What were you guys talking about? It... The glory days. Stuff like that. The the good old times of friendships and broken sails and forging new ones and stuff like that. <clears throat> would you would you like to join us? You and your friends. Tsubasa does hesitate for a moment, looking at Vincent, just, um... Is it okay if we join you? Vincent stands up, and it's at that point, with what you have been told, his clear aches and pains make a lot more sense even though he tries not to show it to everybody else. He stands up with like, an, you can almost hear the creak of his bones trying to give out on him. But he stands regardless and goes, I should probably head back anyway. Tell Jonah and Harles I said hi. And he starts to leave. Wait, Vince, are you sure? It's- Yeah, I'm all right. I'm not exactly a party person anyway. I just came to check up on you guys. All right. Um <laughs> And he, and he steps at first to go out the door you guys can come in through. But Arthur, mm -hmm. As a paladin, there are certain attributes that you hold. Kind of innately as part of your class. One of them is being able to detect undead. And as Vincent gets within 15 feet of you, that feeling in the back of your head of, oh, something's not right here, that's fucked. Kind of goes off. Like, it's not something you've honed because it's not exactly a pleasant feeling to know that an undead is within talking vicinity. Mm -hmm. But it's just a, oh, that's fucked. Where's that coming from? And your eyes settle on Vincent, who is already stepping out of that range, which makes the feeling immediately dissipate. And you put it together that he's probably not exactly alive as he stepped out the other doorway. Okay. Um, that was weird. Sorry about that. After things happened, Vince... Well, I mean, Vince hasn't always been the friendliest of people to begin with. I don't know if I press on that. One more time. I don't know if I should press on that. Is that said out loud in character? Yes. Yeah, Tsubasa gives Arthur a confused look and then just press on what exactly? I just felt something when he walked near me. It was off. Off? How? Mm. Undead? Question mark? Him? And for a moment, Arthur and Helia probably would get to see the, this look 
expression of dread briefly crossed Subasa's face as he looks back at the door that Vince had left. Because he's... Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Subasa looks towards the door remembering what Jonah had said to him about how one of them had died and then just like his ears just sort of droop at the realization that it was indeed Vincent this might be a bad time but uh you're just not finding that out? Vince never really told me much about what happened that day. Perhaps he was protecting you. I don't know if it's protecting me from anything. We all have our ways of protection some of us carry a shield as those of us use our words mm. but sit sit relax enjoy the fireplace enjoy the stories I have to tell. Um. Alright. Uh. I, I don't know. Maybe I should go check on him? If you want. Uh. Are you guys alright staying with Granddad for right now? Uh, I could probably go check up on Max Said I would do that It's been a while Alright uh, What about you, Helia? Do you want to come uh, with us? I'm good to Stay here if you guys have Other things you need to do You'll be fine with Grandad He's got really good stories Uh, I'll I won't be too long, I think. And he does sort of dart and bolt out the door to see if he can find out and see where Vince went. You, with your passive perception, even with the din of people constantly talking around you, you do hear Vincent's voice outside, and you do also hear Lex saying something. It's hard to make out, but he is talking. And this is this is a balcony type area right here. It's kind of one of those ledges, from what I read on what I was what I got that from. It's kind of like a hop down thing. Yeah, no, okay. Subasa just hops over it, just nope. And just goes outside. You catch the tail end of a commentary from Lex saying, I might not be your friend, but that doesn't mean I don't care. And then just the whatever. Take care of yourself. You have no room to talk about what I should be doing. And Vincent is starting to leave. Wait, Vince. What? Um. Are you sure everything's alright? Yeah. Got a new job, just a bit tired. And he's still walking. <laughs> Sorry. First the burp, then the sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent is still walking. 
Uh, yeah, Tsubasa does follow after Vince because Lex is right there and he's not sure if Vincent would even talk to Tsubasa alone at this point. So, yeah, he keeps following Vincent and just... Once he feels like they're out of earshot, he finally just... I talked to Jonah last night. Yeah. And Vince, what happened that day? You've always dodged the Change questions. Change happened. Both of us changed. You know I'm still me, right? Yeah. That's what they all say. That's because it's true. I... Yeah, and I'm still me, right? <laughs> what a joke. And he goes silent. You're still my friend, Vince. No matter what happened that day. He doesn't say anything. But you guys are currently off the board. You're free to continue walking with him. Because he is currently on his way out. Yeah. Subasa is still following him, just... Trying to figure out how to approach the subject of- You said- Jonah said you died! <laughs> mm-hmm. But... He... After a moment, just... Vince... Did... One of us really die that day? Yeah. It's safe to say both of us did. But we're both still here. In the loosest sense of the word, yeah. You try and talk about your own death like it's a Tuesday morning. Then I'll bite. I'm not asking for you to talk about it like that, just... Ever since that happened, it feels like you've been keeping secrets from me, and whenever you say I don't remember, it's just... the end of the conversation. Because you don't. When you do, come back to me. Maybe I'll talk. Why can't- Because I can't tell anybody. What do you mean you can't tell? I can't. Because that would put you in danger. I... And at this point, Tsubasa does stop walking for a moment. Just... Is it at least okay if I keep calling you? Yeah. I could probably use the distraction while I'm out. Be safe getting back. Boss would kill me if I wasn't. I'd be mad if you weren't either, so... Hm. See you, Tsubasa. See you, Vince. And on the edge of your vision, 
You see him tap his heel against the teleport line leading back to Traverse Town. And he's gone in a flash. Tsubasa does just stare at the teleport line for a few moments before he turns and starts heading back to the party. Arthur. Hmm? What'd you doing, bud? We want to sell it. Uh, sell, I would do. <clears throat> okay. So you head out to where you're kind of instinctively sure that Lex is. After all, it is much quieter out here, though distantly so, than it is in there. And he's sitting on the porch. It's not much of a balcony so much as it is just a raised platform. And he is sitting there watching the two others walk away. And he seems concerned in the way that he always is about other people. Concerned. He looks up at you and kind of smiles awkwardly. That same sort of wrong expression of he doesn't know exactly how to do it. And just, it's... There's weird people here tonight. I mean, you hang out with weird people all the time. But yeah, you're no... You're one to talk. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, Raz said something earlier. Mm-hmm. That I shouldn't have to deal with this on my own. The loudness. I don't agree with her. Since it's something I've always had to deal with. But... It's kind of her to consider me in such a manner. Right. But why can't that change, though? Because I've never figured out a way to make it stop. Mm. I've tried everything short of something I'm not allowed to do. I'm pretty sure you'd drag me back. Yeah. So I guess I'm just stuck with it. I mean, Might as well make use of it than shun it. Besides, it keeps you safe. Even if it drives me insane. Could you go into a little more detail? I've never found a good way to describe it, Arthur. It's... I think I hear hearts. But it's all different. Every heartbeat is different. It's less the hearts themselves and more what makes up the person. And I've never been able to hear yours. You're very quiet. And I don't know why. Yeah, that is strange. I have a working theory, currently. Yeah. It's almost like I'm hearing a disconnect between all the parts of a person. The heart, the body, the soul. You know, that stuff we're taught that nobody believes in. But I hear it, and it's loud for most people. But not everybody. I don't think I've ever known a moment of silence my entire life. Where do you think you're getting this from? I'm not sure. 
but it's definitely annoying. Do you think it's like a frequency? Like on a radio? Maybe. Maybe. I haven't tested that. But I, I just haven't been able to tune it out. For mm -hmm. lack of a better word. Because then we could make something where you could tune it off and on. Turn it off and on. Tune it out. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean. <laughs> I do. I do. No need to rush. But it's... I wouldn't want to burden you guys like that. You have enough to deal with. You're screwed. Uh, I'm interested now, so... No. <laughs> interested? In the thing that's driving me insane? How I usually am interested in other things. Like how I just know how... Uh, how I just know... No, but how nobody's talk and other things. Well, yeah, so do I. Apparently, that's innate to me. I'm saying you're kind of stuck with me. Oh, woe is me! I'm so stuck. This is a travesty. What am I supposed to do? Run away? I have a job to do. You're burrito. Uh-huh. What well, actually brought you out here? You check up on you to see if you, the noise was still... Yeah, it's insanely loud in there. Yeah. That's why I'm... theorycrafting. Okay, so if it is a frequency that we can find something to tune it off. Turn it off, so to speak. What do you propose we should try? It's not like there's a frequency of a heartbeat. Isn't it innately one of the giving off sound, oh, sound quotation? Not quotation, but you know what I mean, quote unquote. Mm hmm. It's kind of weird. I'm hearing some, I'm like I'm hearing something that's definitely not noticeable. So that's a weird thing about that. Wouldn't like also other planes be on different frequencies, and that would work on that too. I don't want to think about that, because then what would I hear? I mean, specifically hearts here, so it would have to be. Some also just yeah. so it would be uh, this somehow connection with the heart, the body, and soul because it's clearly not something that's visible to most people, other than what you're specifically in your specific uh, situation. I guess we'll have something to look into, huh? There should be a frequency that cancels it out. Anyway. Oh, by the way, Raz did say she wanted to say something to the both of us. Mm hmm. But she was drunk. So I don't know if that was serious or not. I mean, we'll find out. I guess you're right, if they remember. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably ask. Alright, well, do you want to head back inside? Mm. I'll sit here for a little bit. Sure. And he just falls silent, still sitting there. 
Tabasa. E. You approach to the tail end of that conversation. Kind of like... Literally the ask of, do you want to go back inside? And getting the response of, no, I think I'll stay out here for a bit. Tsubasa, looking like a sad, wet kid. <laughs> uh, he does stop once he gets up to them and just, well, we do still have a bit of time before the celebration itself starts, too, so... You're the one that's having the celebration done in their honor. Yeah, I think I might just sit out here for a little bit too, though. Also, where's Aster? I, I saw I saw Raz and Lance on the couch, and and Healy was with your grandpa. So where? They, what? I went to go do my business. What's up? What business do you have? Business, business do you have here? Yeah. I wanted to talk to somebody. Also, you lost this Lex. Please stop losing him. No, I didn't lose him. I told him to stay where he was. Don't. It, uh... Dude, treat the Orion like a pet, not like it's your partner in battle. Wait until he's at least gone through reaching the age of maturity before doing that. Tsubasa is currently looking around just like, I could have sworn I saw Aster go out back. And just Without missing a beat or looking at Tsubasa, he goes, I went around the building a couple times. Do you not like it inside? Uh, it's loud. I'm sorry. Isn't it? While reaching out to Toro, who was doing the pathetic kitty paws at Lex. Making air biscuits at Lex, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Where did Just... you... Oh, sorry. Does Aster hand over the Aura Lion Cub? Yeah. Just gently holds... Toro, who looks incredibly more con content now. Where did you run off to, Aster? Takeru, right? That was his name? Takeruology? My uncle? Yeah. Yeah, I saw a lady I couldn't perceive properly. Like, it felt wrong to look at her, if that makes sense. So I followed it. Made sure it wasn't anything bad that would ruin... You know, the celebration. It turned out it was somebody that knows somebody by the name of Red. You mean my granddad? Yeah. Is Takeru here? Did Tsubasa see Takeru leave or return at any point? Yes, you would have not necessarily seen him, but as you were leaving the room with uh, Telia and granddad you did hear his distinct footsteps of a heavy weighted like plated boots walking into the area with the dining tables and stuff like that and probably take a seat next to your aunt again yeah at which point Subasana is just like yeah Takeruji came back um if it was someone who knew my granddad though She's probably fine? Hopefully. I don't think Granddad would would have let someone who would who was a danger be here, especially right now. Yeah, that's why I'd only listened in when I'd done anything. If it was something, probably would have... Yeah, I probably would have done something and then immediately gotten help. I'm not going to lie to you guys right now. <laughs> um well like I said we've still got some time before the celebration so we can just hang out here for a bit 
I'm gonna go to the pond that I saw on the side of the building. Do you happen to have the key to that? Because it is closed off. And I never checked if it was open. I could just pop the gate. Aster, we have key blades. It. I know, but that seems rude to summon a keyblade at an event. Um yeah, I can again. I can get you into that into the side garden. Uh oh. Arthur, Let's go. Lex, you'll be fine, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. go with him. Alright. Hey, Arthur. Hmm? You good? No bullshit? Y yeah Okay. I believe that. And he walks off. Yeah. And Tsubasa follows. Well, partially follows, probably ends up taking the lead at one point. <laughs> I would ask Flex one more question before you probably go and follow them. Mm hmm Can you hone in on people? Kind of. It's a little difficult, but also makes that one person very loud to me. So you've tried to hone in on me before. It's not hard. You're the quiet person in a crowd of voices. How loud does it get? He takes a deep breath and goes, I don't think you want that answer. Big or no? How loud are the galas normally for you? Pretty loud. Imagine one of... The biggest ones you've ever been a part of, and multiply it times five. That's the loudest it's gotten so far. So when you uh, listen to mine? No, yours is. He f flounders for a moment, trying to find the right words, and then goes, "You're like a white noise machine." If that's the case, why not just focus on mine? It's not that easy, I've found. Because if I just focus on you, then I won't be able to hear anybody who tries to sneak up on you. Okay, I see that. That's all. Just the half-cocked grin of... Thank you, but I've already tried that kind of look. Aster and Tsubasa. Yep. As you're walking away and heading to the side garden, do you strike up any conversation? I don't know, does Aster have things to ask Tsubasa? Do you know a person by the name of Teach? Is that right? No. No, what was her name? Uh, uh there's a lady that Takara was speaking to. Um, T, 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 something. Lady something starts with a T. Sounds like, like if I had to spell it out, it'd probably sound like you tried to spell touche, but wrong. <laughs> Well, history for me, Tsubasa. That's a ten. It sounds familiar in the same way that all of your granddad's stories sound familiar with a certain level of wrongness. Of oh. He's not telling a fib, it's like he's almost exaggerating. So, it sounds familiar, you're sure? Yeah, Tsubasa yeah, does think for moments just like, the name sounds familiar? I think Grandad might have mentioned her at some point, but... Aster's gonna grab Tsubasa by the shoulders and take him around this corner first off to make sure that no one else sees him do this. <laughs> it's just like, what? wait, Aster, what? Grab Subasa by his cheeks and then 
does his best, and then Aster is going to replicate the lady's face as best he can remember. But it probably has a couple changing parts, and the few parts he can nail down are his pale skin, white hair, and onyx eyes, but no facial shapes would be able to stick. Do I roll for history again? Either history with advantage or straight intelligence. I'm going to go with history with advantage. Thank you. Up oh, 21. 21. You recall someone of this similar nature? And her name is Lady Teich. And she's... You never quite understood what drew your granddad to interact with her because she was just another lady. Just unremarkable in every sense of the word. Like, it took a couple of seconds of staring at these normal features to go, maybe... And then going, yeah, that sounds about right. Like, it's that sort of unremarkable and unforgettable. Like, like unremarkable and forgettable. Like, it's literally the essence of this person blends in so much that it is hard to look at them for very long without your eyes blearing a little bit. Yeah. It's, the boss is just, oh, Lady Teich. Um, yeah. I, there's... Not much to say about her, though. I don't even know why Granddad talked with her as often as he did. Or talked about her. Aster kind of, like, stops doing the face thing, and he's making sure he didn't just give himself a nosebleed. Fucking hell. Are you okay? Have you- Not really. Uh, I tried to replicate a face that my body didn't want to remember, you know? Tsubasa is going to give Aster a quick look over just making sure everything is at least physically alright. Or maybe magically too. I don't know if he can detect magic. <laughs> Medical magic. What are you trying to do? Tsubasa is... Basically trying to do a me like a medicine check, but both in the physical and magical sense. Full Arcana? Yeah. Uh, another 21. Everything's fine? I don't know what you want me to say. Like... I... Yeah, no, he's fine. It's just that essence of whenever you contort your face to somebody, that's how I have it in my head of him changing his faces. Okay. It's just like, he couldn't remember which way to do it, so he's trying everything at once. And he's just like, oh, careful, your face is going to get sore. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, no, Tsubasa reaches up and just sort of gives Aster a small pat, just, maybe you shouldn't do that for a while? Uh, try to replicate her or run into somebody my face doesn't want to remember? Just the straining yourself in general. Please. Okay. Let's get to this. Is it a pond? It feels like a pond. Is it a pond? <laughs> yeah, uh, Tsubasa just... Yeah, it's it's a pond. Um, hold on, let me get the gate open. And he skitters over to pop open the gate. Mm -hmm. Is it locked? Probably not. No, this is private property. Why would yeah. it be locked? Yeah, so he just casually opens the gate without any issue. Aster's face is in his hands as he helps open the gate as well. 
just you could have I lived it. on a farm. If the gate was not closed and locked, animals got out, okay? I mean, fair, but... <laughs> this is definitely not a farm. But we can relax out here for the time being. Ogasama will definitely make the announcement when it's time for everyone to gather. Steps inside. You didn't get lost on the way back, did you? No. I had a guide. Toro? Yeah. Wait, if Toro's here, then where's Rattles and Mary? Or, no, wait, Mary's still with Healy, isn't she? Mary's probably still with Helia. Rattles is somewhere being a menace to somebody at the party, probably. Oh, no. I'm going to have to explain that to my Oka, Selma, and Papa. Why do you call them different names? Because they mean the same thing. Technically, kind of... Oka, Selma is another way to say mom. Just in Japanese. Why not just say mom and pops? He shrugs after a moment. It's just because I honestly never really thought about it. Actually. Do you still have Speak with Animals up? Yes. You just hear the very distinct mumble of it's the level of respect, Dangus. From nearby. Rattles. Like, at the moment he hears Dingus, he just goes, Rattles! <laughs> and looks in whatever direction he heard the voice from. Literally underneath the tree canopy over here. <laughs> Tsubasa also target spotting his tree meter, just Rattles! Why are you over, all the way over here? Rattles is currently buried underneath tons of fallen leaves in that sense of, ah, uh, yes, the cold compress. Like... <laughs> <laughs> he is comfy. Equally comfy if he was warm. <laughs> it is the cold compress of nature. <laughs> so boss is just I mean, okay, so it's good to know that you're here, Rattles. Um Did Rattles say another bad word or something? No, he just called me a dingus. I have beef with him. Why do you have why do you have beef with a baby dream eater? Yeah, dude, why do you have beef with a baby dream eater? Fuck off, you're not a baby. Stop saying that. Aster! I am innocent. He's not a baby. He's, but he's small! His kind reach maturity... His kind reach maturity at the age of, like, four. He's six. I thought Skelter Wilds got bigger. They do. That... So, Dream Eaters have two separate types of maturity. They have mental and physical maturity. Mentally, they become adults preparing and start training, focusing their bodies, and more or less growing to hit their physical maturity. Oh. It's, it's why nightmares are so deadly, because they hit their physical maturity first, but not their mental maturity. They are polar opposites, you know? Yeah, I remember reading about them. Just the distant get good. I will punt kick you into the water. Sorry, not you. Bitch boy. Aster. He fucking said get good. I have to fight him. You don't have to fight him. Your Tsubasa at this point is going over to pick up Rattles. Just like, no, don't punt kick my baby. If a Skelter yeah. Wild could have the smuggest smug cat look. <laughs> A 
Aster about to lose his goddamn mind. Aster takes a deep breath. Deep breath in, and then breathes out, looks him dead in the face, and says, You only got a year more of this before you'll never be picked up by anyone again. Except me, buddy. Because me and Arthur are the only ones strong enough to pick you up. Yeah, but then I'll be strong enough to lift you and throw you. What's good about that one, buddy? Oh, bring it the fuck on! <laughs> Tsubasa just holding Rattles a little bit closer. <laughs> I feel like at this point, Aster summoned his new keyblade. I am ready for a fight. Aster, put fuck that away! <laughs> <laughs> Just the fucking like, no, nah, he fucking started it. Get that your goddamn man. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to finish it. <laughs> uh -huh. He summons his gateway. Oh, I'm gonna have a stroke because of all this stress. And you don't help none. Not you, him. Stop going on 60 and maybe that'll fix it. Oh my god. I will shove you into the dark. No, I won't. Do I need to put Rattles back in my room? Do you I'll need to go back, back in my in room? room. <laughs> <laughs> just looking down at, at the skelter while just like, do I need to put you in timeout? <laughs> It is then Aster. Looking, looking directly at Aster, just the most defiant, even God himself could not put me in timeout. He just gives the most smug it. Like, it's Aster's turn to be the smug cat. He goes, what's wrong, buddy? You afraid of timeout? <laughs> it's just like cool, don't get any gossip, you bitch. Bitch, you got gossip? Sure the fuck do. Rattles has gossip? Leave with that! <laughs> Wait, hold up. What do you mean you have gossip? What did you hear? What did he oh, hear? Oh, yeah. Dude, Dream Eaters hear everything. They understand common. People just don't think they do. Tsubasa just stares at Aster, looks pointedly down at Rattles. Looks back at Aster, it's just like, they don't pay much attention, do they? They pay all the attention. No, They're I'm talking, I'm talking no one... about people who think Dream Eaters don't understand. Oh, yeah, no. For God, honestly, I've seen people talk to somebody... I've seen somebody who was talking to a Dream Eater, and Rattles can attend to this, who was talking to a Dream Eater like this, and the Dream Eater was one with a book attached to it, so it knew far more than... The person who was adopting them. Oof. Oh. Then just the <laughs> yeah, that one was a shit show. I wonder how James is doing. Oh, oh my he's bad. doing. Oh my, is he fucking back again? Damn, I got James. The his name was James. He chose their own names. Because he was smart enough to do that. And then they called him, what was it? Flippy? They sure tried. Yeah. Sometimes Dream Eaters return to the farm because they don't mesh well with the people who adopt them. Uh, well, I mean, that is understandable. Do you like being with me, though, Rattles? Yeah? I do not acquiesce to this request. Is it is what he's saying? I do not acquiesce to this request. He's basically Otherwise, saying I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Otherwise, you got him dead to fucking rights, and he doesn't have the pride to say you're right. <laughs> you a bitch. You the same way. <laughs> you a bitch. I can turn this off. Rattles is going to get some head scratches though. Don't reward him for being sassy. Is it bad that I think it's kind of cute? 
A little bit, but we all got issues. Hey! Yeah, alright, Mr. Performance Anxiety, we get it. <laughs> to Aster, but it sounds like general. Yeah. <laughs> the Keyblade returns. Aster? Yeah? Put the Keyblade away. Working on it. At this point, Rattles is just going to get a hand on the top of his snoot. Just, maybe you should stop antagonizing him. Nothing is said. Reaches over and grabs Rattle by the head. Hey, you got gossip. Give it. No. You know, Tsubasa, I think Rattles is looking a bit fat. Let's cut back on his food intake. I'll show you this new keto-style Dream Eater chips. My dad's been giving them to one of the thicker ones that we need to skinny down a bit. It'll help right up. <laughs> Tsubasa just rattles, please. I'm a bad bitch, you can't scare me. Can I borrow Rattles for a second? What are you going to do? Give him words of encouragement. Tsubasa is cautiously going to ho hold Rattles out to Aster. He's going to grab Rattles and take a couple steps away. It's a lot and then of steps whisper away. To rat yeah. Whisper to Rattles. Don't you fucking lie to me. I know you're fucking adoring the way that they treat you. You don't want to upset them, do you? Look, man, that fucking lady was weird. You saw her too? F fuck yeah, dude. Dude. I went after oh my her. god. Yeah. Trust me. I went after the motherfucker. I understand. It's like, she's... You know? I don't want to freak any of the others out, because Goro didn't seem to notice. Goro notices a lot. Part of his old shtick is on an aura line. I think that was part and parcel of why I noticed, because I think that that lady might be as ancient as, you know, the dinosaurs. How old? Fuck if I know, I'm like 12, what do you want me to do about it? Bitch, you're six. Same difference. <laughs> no, <laughs> mm, fine. Did you... Were you able to get a read on her face? No. I think that was the weirdest part. Yeah. I memorized faces and I couldn't even keep a straight glance at her eyes. Don't worry about it. If she's important enough, she'll show up. That's what I'm worried about. Every time this group runs into somebody who's important enough, they show up in a way that's not good for them. I think we're worrying too much. I think we're paranoid. I think you've inflicted me with the paranoia. Why have you done this? Subas is just off in his curse is you. You withheld the gossip. And, and my punishment just... is your paranoia, bitch. Suffer. This is my everyday. Are you guys okay over down. there? Yeah. Uh, he sets down, rattles, and just goes, Yeah, I'm good. Flat fuck. Hey. Flat Fuck Friday over there. Say again? Flat Fuck Flat Friday. Fuck. Flat Fuck Flat. Friday. Flat Fuck Friday says you're fat. 
Oh, he... Oh, I think... I guess he overheard that. What does that mean? It was a thing me and my friends from Traverse Town used to do, where sometimes we would just lay out on the floor. Flat Fuck Friday. Prolonged stare. You know, sometimes when things get to be just a little too much. Okay. Maybe we should start doing that at the dorm. Um, hey. Yeah? Tsubasa? What's up? Shit's gonna hit the fan. Not what? tonight. What do you mean? I mean, I have hung out with you guys for a little under a month, maybe even a year. And so far, I've answered so many questions, I thought were gonna take actual years off my life in a matter of weeks. Shit hits the fan with you guys. Often. It's not... And he puts his... He puts his fist against... Tsubasa's shoulder and nudges him. Luckily, you guys got a pair of umbrellas on. Yeah. Thank you, Aster. Yeah. Uh... I stuck my hand in darkness. What? I stuck my hand in darkness in the ceiling of the room that you left us in. We went to the attic. Some shit went down. Oh. We pulled up the umbrellas, handled it, and then I stuck my arm, like, and he holds up his left <laughs> hand, middle finger to elbow, into the darkness. Aster, I think you sip skipped a few chapters! Hold up, what happened I... after I left you guys? We'll tell you on the ride home. But understand this. It's good. It's fine. We're handling it. Everything's okay. Arthur's a flashlight to darkness, but still. Also, mm -hmm. Raz, Raz uh, tried to... Who said that? No, that was just me going, uh-huh, <laughs> and oh. because of the flashlight comment. Stop. Flash. Flashlight. I have to clarify because of him. He didn't even say anything. There are so many questions I have, and you guys better answer them. Don't worry. We'll answer them. For now, enjoy your party. And understand, it's being handled. Also, uh, gonna go ahead and call it now. I'm probably gonna shove my hand in darkness again soon. Why? He just holds up his arm. Felt weird, but familiar? I don't know. Didn't feel wrong is what I'm getting at. It felt wrong, but it didn't feel wrong, you know? Well, isn't that a normal thing for warlocks? Yeah, people who actively seek out becoming a warlock. Tsubasa, the warlock class was forced on me. Oh. I was born, technically, I came into existence, I wasn't even born in an alleyway of two people's dead bodies. I'm a monster. Not in the sense of, oh, I can only do evil. I mean, physically, I'm an amalgam, I guess you could call me. Or Chimera? Chimera, yeah, but of two people. Would that just be called a Doomira? Yeah. Aster. Yes. 
You <laughs> this is probably gonna freak out, Aster, but you just hear Lex's voice kind of in a half echo, a half like sharp whistle of just like, I'll kill you. Like <laughs> <You look around, laughs> just the immediate I'll kill you. He looks around like suddenly like, is he the only one that heard that? Huh? 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 Tsubasa, you heard nothing. <laughs> Tsubasa giving Aster a concerned look is just like... Aster? You good? Puts his hand on his heart. He's gonna beak and we're all quick. Just ping out. Huh? Huh? to do flat fuck friday tonight after the party i don't know what the hell with flat and fucks you're oh wait you're not saying fuck you're saying foot are you no i'm saying fuck and i will say out of character this is the first time anyone in the party has heard tsubasa's curse so and it's the late arrival so he doesn't know if it's normal or not But yeah, you no, he's hear, picking... you you hear Lex's voice again saying, "Fucking calm down." He's going to take a moment, and in that way of like a psychopath cracking their neck, he's going to try and do the same to Lex. Don't do this. It's just a sending spell, you weirdo. Don't. Send things to me. I was checking for somebody. Who are you checking for? Would you believe me if I said an evil clone? Or yeah. brother? I don't know what he is. A, a, somebody that is the definition of it's on site, from what Vortex told me. So a rival. Closer to a brother than I'm comfortable with. That doesn't stop anybody from being a rival, you douchebag. Anyway, the point is, I'm go back inside. Not... I can sense rain. Is rain coming? Wait, you can sense rain? Do <laughs> you hear nothing else? Bitch! Bitch! Tsubasa <laughs> just watching Gaster like, what's going on now? <laughs> just hears him verbally go, you bitch. What? Aster? Yeah, what's up? You good? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Why? What's up? Well, you started freaking out for a moment, and then you went quiet, and now you're calling someone a bitch? Oh, someone was a bitch to me, so I had to return it. Oh, wait, hold on, I need to check something, and puts his hand back in his heart. Ping. <sighs> Nothing. Ping fuck. Well... Um... All right, then. Is Aster not going to mention anything at all about being told that rain's coming? He's just going to start taking off his jacket. He's like, eh, it's nothing to worry about. And he's going to put it, like, kind of preemptively over his, over Aster, uh, to boss's head. Just like, anyways. Anything else you want to know about real quick? Uh, I th think I'm good for right now. Why the jacket? Give it a minute. <sighs> and he does not break eye contact with Tsubasa. How long do they wait for the rain then? <laughs> Surprisingly, not very long. It's... Just... It occurs to you, Aster, as the raindrops start to fall that you were given literally a less than five minute warning from someone who probably was giving you time to talk. And it's 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Just the drizzle at first. Oh. I didn't even realize it was going to be raining. Uh, we probably should both get inside, Aster. Come on. And just to check, is this a door inside? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sabasa just leads, uh, goes around the pond. It's just like, come on, Aster. Uh, there should be a quiet spot inside, too. Aster's gonna stand on the edge of the river a bit, and he's gonna take like a... Before the mud sets in, he's gonna try and jump over. You're fine. I'm not gonna make you roll for that. I could, but I'm not gonna be mean. <laughs> not right now? No. Just skittering inside. Because, ah, wet, rain. The moment Aster is inside, he leans forward, lets his arms droop, just dog shakes. <laughs> <laughs> Subasa just briefly closes the jacket around him. Just. Just, we've got towels! <laughs> Wait, we left Rattles outside! No, we didn't. And then, like, he just takes a step side, like a little side step. There's Rattles, who looks very nonplussed about this situation. Of just, I was comfortable kind of look. Better to be inside where it's dry. The lump onto the ground. I'm just uh. Zubasa just hesitates for a moment, reaches down, gently gathers up rattles, and just. Shuffles back into this room and puts him down on the uh, on. I'm assuming this is a no. Wait, that's a door. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he just shuffles away, just like hold on, Aster. Let me take Rattles in here and then skitters back in here. Aster just not waiting where he was told to is following actually. <laughs> So now Grandad and Helia get to see Tsubasa carrying rattles like an oversized cat. Just the ah kind of look from rattles. <laughs> Just like, um, I'm back, Grandad, Helia. Uh, it's raining now. So it is bad omen, but wonderful for the hair. Says you, I'm gonna frizz up later. You do not use the good products. I don't use any products. Boy! And we're gonna skip to the... <laughs> <laughs> Aster about to learn about hair care! Farm boy with Good genetics. Suffer. <laughs> Die. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Arthur. Yeah. As it starts to rain, at first a drizzle, Lex stands up and walks out into it after having set Toro down, who clearly doesn't enjoy the rain as much as his his owner does, and just holds out his arms and like lets the rain fall on him, and he and he just has this big grin, a real grin that you haven't seen him wear in a long time, and you're not sure if he's the cause of this oncoming rainstorm or if he's just very good at telling when it's happening. But he's grinning. And he looks like he's having fun. Arthur, 
Do you join him in the rain? Yes, because I love the rain. So you both step out into the rain while the cacophony of sounds behind you dims to the sound of rainfall and muddy water underneath you. And he just laughs because he knows that he's probably going to, you know, receive a bit of a brutal punishment in the form of being somewhat sick. But as far as that's concerned, he seems to be okay with it. And even when both of you are given the warning by another family member that there's going to be cake soon, cake and ice cream and all sorts of sweets, he doesn't move from where he is until you do. Even at the promise of something sweet when everyone else is also eating something sweet. He seems content. Happy, almost. And if you want, we can cut there. I mean, because like, I actually do have a minor migraine. Yeah. So that's the two you guys. I'm okay with cutting this. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine yeah. with it. It's a, it's very neat. And then, and then we, you know, pick up next session with like the. Uh... Wait, hold on, Helia. Do you want to do anything? I don't really have anything to add to this. Okay. Aster will grab you next session then. Well, I don't know if we'll still be at the party for the next session, though. Regardless. But yeah, we should probably cut there. I do have quite a long work week. Alright, so stop recording? <laughs>